bringing Christ to the nations, the Lutheran Hour. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I is the 225th reigning monarch of Ethiopia, a descendant of the line which is said to have had its origins in the union of King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba, celebrated in Ethiopian folklore and preserved in the imperial coat of arms. The seal of the house of David, Solomon's father, is there, but not by itself. The cross of Christ, combined with David's emblem, points back to the time when Christianity came to Ethiopia in the 4th century A.D., and to the force which Ethiopia's Coptic Christian tradition has exerted to bind her people together and to shape her culture. Music like that of the krar, which you hear in the background, a four-stringed instrument plucked with the fingers, remains in use to this day. And the countryside is dotted with churches centuries old, many of them carved out of solid rock. It is to Ethiopia itself, and to this Christian tradition, that we want to introduce you today, as the Lutheran Layman's League presents a special program on the celebration of Christmas in Ethiopia featuring an interview with His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia. Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital city, means new flower in Amharic, Ethiopia's official language. The city is aptly named. Less than 80 years old, it grew up in Ethiopia's central highlands, to a present-day population of nearly 500,000. I talked with Emperor Haile Selassie in his private office in Jubilee Palace, built in 1955 in the southeast part of Addis Ababa, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of His Imperial Majesty's reign. Although Emperor Haile Selassie speaks excellent English, which is Ethiopia's second language, he answered my questions in Amharic since state protocol requires him to conduct all official business in the official language. Our first interpreter is Dr. Manasi Haile, Ethiopia's Minister of Information and Tourism. In the background, you can hear children playing in the courtyard of the palace. Your Imperial Majesty, it is a great honor to be permitted to speak with you today. Yeah. 
such vibration there. Yes, honorable family, give thanks for your presence with us on such a wonderful moment as we do celebrate and give thanks for such a, a time as now as we celebrate the Ethiopian Christ Mass, which is the seventh day of January. And let me just say also that melody there coming forward, all courtesy of Ja. Far I T B I the first. So we give thanks for that as well. So heart to celebration to each and everyone at this time. Give thanks for love and give thanks for, for majesty. And we're very thankful for the joy of the black Christ in flesh with us and keeping us in such harmony and happiness that we could come together at this moment. Let me begin. As you know, this evening we are continuing as I promised you, our steps towards our grand lecture, which would be on Sunday, this Sunday, which is the 10th day of January 2021. We will be definitely having a, a, a wonderful presentation directly dealing on the subject area, Lalibella Christ and Christ Mass. And the Christ Mass is the seventh day of January. And today being the seventh day of January as well, I am really hoping that everyone that is watching this program would have seen the program that we did a few evenings ago when we were highlighting how many churches are there at Lalibella. I think that because that also is a part of leading us towards the, the lecture on Sunday. So for those who have never attended one of our online lecture, it's really a webinar. What you do, you just contact us. You make your payments via the cash app. If you do not have the, the luxury of the cash app, all you have to do is contact, contact us, pardon me, um, by email, precise at 27 at gmail dot com and you just inform us that you do not have the cash up and we will work it out of course you know the admission for this specific lecture is only 20 united states um, currency dollars and then when you make that payment if you make it through the cash app you email us and let us know you made that payment and um, uh, that will ensure that you would get your key that is your electronic key, your e-key, to enter into the lecture, which will be this Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time sharp, or 6 p.m. Eastern time, or 11 p.m. UK time. You can figure out the rest time. So if you're in Japan, if you're in China, Hong Kong, Beijing, I mean, I think you can work it out from the information that we just gave you a moment ago. So we will definitely go in, into the depths. I mean, all you have to do is to just judge the lectures that we are doing leading up. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm gonna tell you clearly, after tonight, you're gonna say, well, the man spill everything. I don't know what else he's going to be talking about on Sunday. But you see, this is just, that's what I'm saying. It's a preparation. So everybody can say that they get the preparation. But it's not everyone, not every goodie, for sure, will be 
get in the lecture unless you come in. So I'm looking forward to you being there with us this Sunday. And uh, let me just definitely say, you know, in a heartfelt expression, a heart of celebration to all members of this Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. And why I specify the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress is, is because, you know, King Emmanuel teach us that the Christ Mass, the 7th of January now, which is, we, we acknowledge it's the Ethiopian Christ Mass. Um, it's not Ethiopia alone that celebrates that. Other Orthodox churches and Orthodox um, uh, factions celebrate the 7th. Some even celebrate the 6th of January as their Christ Mass or their, their birth of Christ or you know, whatever name they may use. But King Emmanuel teach us that this is now, listen to this, you listening? King Emmanuel teach us that this is the birth of earth. When I first, first came into this Congress order, like, like the first two years, I always thought that the birth of earth was the 7th of February, because that was just me leaning on my own understanding. I know I heard birth of earth, I know it was the seventh or something, something like, yeah, but I didn't see it as the Christ mass. I said, no, the birth of earth must be the 7th of February because that is our new year. So that sounds like the birth of something, something brand new, a new beginning, new life, new earth, birth of earth. But then I come to realize that the birth of earth is Christ mass. Bobo Shanti referred to it as the birth of earth. And I'm going to hear no other one as Rastafari. You know what I mean? And unless it's one that, you know, know the culture and just saying it, refer to Christ Mass as the birth of earth. So with that unique touch, you know, just a heart of celebration and birth of earth to all members of this Congress, Ethiopia, Africa, Black International Congress, all Bobo Shanti within this order that keep up such an order and keep up such a day of celebration knowing that is a day of remembrance and a day of the Black Christ. And um, let me just say it's a joy to, you know, that 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 I know the Black Christ has given I personally the mandate to do whatever it is that you know that you see I do. And I will also say too, you know, I know that uh, even sometimes the message may come out a specific way. In fact, I am made to understand that a few individuals um, are not too pleased with my personal expression, um, especially when I had the, the good brother here with us, Honorable Prophet Daniel sitting with us. And um, I, I know within my own self personally, you know, sometimes I wouldn't say the passion gets the best of me. I would more say that sometimes I make the passion clear and uh, apparently I made some statements, for example, when I was saying that there is no one that can um, approach me or, you know, stop me from doing what I'm doing. And it seems as if that statement or that set of statements kind of went a little further than I think it, it was designed to go. Because if you listen to my statement properly, I even ended it by saying um, that it's not a joy for me to say that. I'm saying it because of the reality of it, not because I am the big bad wolf. I'm just saying that, you know, I mean, it, the, the structure is not there. That even if, you know, I am to this descriptor, you know, there's, there's no policing if you want to use that term. Really, really. And that's just the truth. And that's why I said it's not a one man, no one man can say it. It's not, it's, it has never been a one man thing. The only one man it has been is the Black Christ himself, the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. So, so I'm just saying in reality, that is just the, the, the truth of the matter. And that's not how I wish it would be. That's, that's the truth of the matter too. And that's what I was saying. As I said, maybe sometimes how I express myself is maybe different than how some people express themselves. But if you listen to my words keenly, it wasn't a joy for me to say it like that. It was just the moment, it was the reality, it was the truth. And let me just say, uh, my honorable brothers and sisters of this Congress, you know, I consider myself a youth in this. 
I don't consider myself, you know, me more than anyone or I trying to be over anyone. I'm not in none of them things. Whatever does be going on amongst some of the island, I'm not in that. Listen. <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, man. As you could see, I'm a family man, man. There are people around the world that almost worship me, man. You understand what I say? I'm not here to play with nobody's mind, to take advantage of nobody. I just come to do what, from my heart, I believe the Most High has sent me to do. And I come in humility. I mean, there's certain things that I know for sure that I have an understanding of. And if I was to just keep quiet because another man don't agree, the world wouldn't even know of it. Straight. Some of it, we're going to express it even in this program here today. So in all humility, if I said anything that would have sound, sounded offensive to any member of this Congress, the Congress, I mean, the Congress is the government, eh? not me. So if I, so if the Congress cannot take control and have authority, well, well, maybe we need to, 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 to shake it up and let me, let me come in a humble state then and show you, well, listen, I ain't trying to put myself over no one, bigger than no one. And if I have said something that has been, since it was said in the public, I can manfully come in the public. And if I have said anything out of the way, I am sorry. I apologize. I hesitated. The man, some the man will say that, but sorry. It's part me say it also sorry, but it's something deep. Because I, I have no intention. I come with humility in this thing, eh? I'm a servant of the black Christ and I'm a servant of, of his kingdom. I didn't come to be the marshal. I didn't come to be the captain. I didn't come to be the leader. I didn't come to the, be, be the president. I didn't come to be the vice president. I didn't even come to be the leading priest. I come to be the priest. I come to be the prophet. Trust me, I didn't come. I just come because I thought this could save my soul. And even before I accepted it, I decided that I must carry the word of the Almighty to the four corners of the globe. And since I found this to be the word of the Almighty, I'm carrying it to the four corners of the globe. And listen, man, since this has been, because it's all, it's, it's in different spheres, you know, Facebook and so, so let me just say what I say. It's not as if I just take up this thing and run it. Anyone that is anyone would know that I'm an individual that I approach first. You know, I write letters. I, I explain what I'm doing. You understand? When I go into different countries, eh, I just write a letter to the governor, general, prime minister, whoever let them know I'm in the country. So if I'm a part of a government, they don't think I'm going to deal on a level two. Different concerns you hear me come and talk about. It's not as if I just jump on the radio and talk about it or jump on the whatever and talk about it. Decades we in this thing. Decades. But um, my, 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 my real mission is to express the esoterics of this stuff. That's really my mission. I'm not in the power thing and them things. Everybody have their lane, you know what I mean? And it's sad people try to pull you in lanes that you don't belong in. So I know my lane. And nobody can rock me from my lane. I don't care if you agree or disagree. That's your business. I know my lane. And I come to unravel and reveal that which many don't understand straight up. Who don't like it? It's just your business. Now you see how I say that? A person will take that offensive. <laughs> but what do you want me to say? You know? So, so, so I just want that to be clear, Admirable family, you know what I mean? The elders of this Congress, you don't even know how much this man love you. And, 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 you know what I mean? 
you don't you don't understand and the intention that this man have is in, in his mind there is a thing i would say on this this platform for this congress you know, but I'm not in the power thing and fighting and I'm not picking nobody's side neither. Don't put me in that. And let me be clear with all the love, please don't pass a place with me. I don't care who it is. Please trust my job. I don't I, I don't have control of them things. If you play with me and you call my name too much and it's out in the public, something does turn on to me. Man, even if you tie me down, I will come for you. I'm sorry. See, even just to say that. I trying to hold it back. I'm sorry, yeah. Trust me. I and I think that happens because I know who I am, and there's a terrible angel in me. You don't just play with God. That's really what it is. And if you don't know, you just don't know. So just back off. Be careful. Ever see the sign? Don't mind the dog. Be careful. Beware of the owner. <laughs> yeah. But 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 you know, it's really hard to celebrate. And, and 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 believe me, I'm a humble servant to this army. I'm a humble servant. I'm a frontline soldier for this thing here. Once everything in order and the command is ready, I click in and I'm ready to do what I got. All right. Yeah. So give thanks, man. Rastafari I live. Yeah, so. What I wanted to do, we're going to do a bit of reading here. And um, yeah, just get yourself together. Wow. I know I spent a little time speaking there, but I just got to do what I got to do. And let me just say something here. In fact, no, I ain't going to say it tonight. It's all right. Okay. What I'm going to be reading from, in fact, let me see if I could share this with you. Sometimes you got to be careful what you're sharing. Copyrights and different things. But this here is... Um, King Lalibella, his supposed travels, tribula tribula tribulations, and achievements. And this is Richard Pankhurst and Rita Pankhurst, you know, the Pankhurst family. Now, listen to me. We did a whole program on this on the shock of the hour. I think that was Tuesday evening. Eh? The shock of the hour is the radio program that we have every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, and uh, the program is recorded and we have a subscription uh, a subscription uh, plan available where you could subscribe for a month six months or a year so i know the vast majority of those who are listening to this are not a part of the subscription team for the shop of the hour but um, if you desire especially if you will be coming into the program or uh, to the lecture on Sunday. Yeah, all those who will be coming to the lecture, you might want to, you know, take a look at or take a listen to that program. The program we did, eh, we kind of went into depths or at least deeper, I should say, than what we are going to be going to right now. So just quickly, again, the Pankhurst family, you would know, I'm sure many of you would know when Emperor Haile Selassie I and Ethiopia was attacked by Mussolini and he was in England and he uh, made the address to the League of Nations, etc. It was the Pankhurst family, Sylvia Pankhurst, who, if I'm not mistaken, was a feminist as well and an activist in general, who really wrote a lot of articles and stood up in general for the plight that the Ethiopians were going through and the Emperor Haile Selassie I took kindly to her and her family. So you would always hear of the Pankhurst family in somewhat relation to Ethiopia. Some of them have gone to Ethiopia, are still in Ethiopia up to this very day. So you have um, the Pankhurst family now bringing this information out. So what this is really about, it speaks about the the the, the Gadel or Gadli, uh, or some call it Gidel, which is like uh, the text of Lalibela in, in comparison to some paintings as it relates to Lalibela. Okay, follow this now. It says here, the painting begins in scene one with the picture of Lalibela's father, um, John Siome, 
who, though not named in the picture, is well known from the text. Attention then focuses in scene two on the Gadil's account of Lalibella's birth that involves the swarming of bees around the baby prince. This caused his mother, referred to in the painting as Ki Kiwana, an unusual name known in local tradition, but that does not figure in the text. She claims that, that the bees foresaw her son's great future. The artist in scene three and four then introduces three new elements into the story not found in the Gadil, namely Lalibella's baptism, education, and graduation as a deacon. So the comparison is being made there with Lalibella's, um, the birth now, the comparison is being made with the text and the, the painting, basically. Keeping in mind uh, why, why this is important, at least to me, is, is, is really a continuation of things that we have been speaking of for a while. How in our African tradition, how we express ourselves with, 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 through dance, through, through song, through poet, poetry, um, um, theater, and these different things. And, and we express our culture using these. We express our history. We express our religion, if you want to use the term. We, we, we respect, our, uh, um, um, express, pardon me, our, our, our moral standing, our morality. All of these things are expressed using the art form, painting, dancing, singing, um, uh, uh, instruments, writing, good old fashioned writing it in a book or on a scroll, you know, or even in plays, in the theater. That's very, very, very important. And that is where you come into the science of the allegory. You, you, you comprehend, good. So the, the, the Gadil, meanwhile, goes on to explain that the throne was then occupied by Lalibella's brother, probably in fact his half brother, some other texts. Um, do not account him as half-brother. King Herbie, in fact, some texts refer to him as Harby. But anyway, King Herbie, Herbie who, who, who lived in fear of a prophecy then current that Lalibella would one day wear the crown. Herbie, for this reason, hoped to see his half-brother dead. Lalibella's half-sister shared um, Herbie's fear and is illustrated in scene five, that's of the painting, sent him some beer to which she had added poison. So, so, so both his brother and his sister now conspiring to take him out because the prophecy says, even from the time of the honeybees, the prophecy says that this man gonna come and rule the throne. So they're gonna look to take him out. Okay, and it says the, the Gadil and the painting differ somewhat in the explanation of the above event. The Gadil or the text remarks simply that Lalibella was thirsty, a statement not repeated in the painting. The painting, pardon me. The latter alone, on the other hand, explains the reason for the gift. Lalibella's sister sent it we are told because her half brother then was then taken the Taini side they have here Koso and we are left to assume as was customary needed to be given a present by way of encouragement or compensation. The text then gives additional information not included in the painting that Lalibella, on the arrival of the bear, asked the bearer of the gift, a deacon, to taste it for him, as was traditional. Of course, you have to sip it before the king. This was shown, or this as shown in the scene six, had uh, disastrous consequences. The deacon and a dog, which happened to be there, both died of the poison. Lalibella shook that he had been responsible, albeit unknowingly, for these two deaths, thereupon snatched the vessel and drank the poison. The text or the Gadil likens this action to that of the Christ uh, who gave his life on the cross to save mankind. 
yeah, the painting and the, the text, which is the Gadil, just saying it so you get it clear. Now, again, diverge. The text states that Lalibela at this point fell weak, but claims that this was not on account of the poison against which God would have protected him. But because a large internal worm in Lalibela's body had been distributed by it, the painting on the other hand makes no mention of a parasite or the parasite. But as Lalibela collapsed in scene six, apparently as direct result of the poison, his body is then prepared, listen to this now, his body is then prepared for burial, but is found to be still warm. His immortal soul is then received by Saint Gabriel in scene eight. And you know, what's interesting there, you know, when, as I said, we did a program where we read more than what we are reading now. And um, there was a comparison that was made with even the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, wherein you would, you would hear uh, uh, ones speak of the, the uh, the thirty first day of May, nineteen ninety four. This is the day. The date. Eh? This is very important. That is given for the transfiguration of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. You know, transition, and you would see we have had different ones sitting with us, and we've reasoned about that event. And ones would tell you that I wasn't there, me personally. And ones would tell you that well. Remember, they carry the Black Christ now, the Honorable King Emmanuel, eh? to the doctor and to the mob. The doctor, according to what was said, I'm not going to call no names right now. I've said it enough times. I could if I want, but let's just keep it so for now. That the man, um, uh, they announced him dead, but his pulse is still beating. And I'll tell you honestly, the first time I hear that, I, I, I will say, well, that don't make no sense. They carry him to the mob. Now, what really stands out there, eh? and I know one may say what they have to say, but this is very important. I sat and I thought, what kind of uncivilized country was Jamaica at that time? Where in the world that's a civilized country? You can take a dead man and carry this dead man to the hospital where a doctor going to tell you, well, the man dead. But the pulse still beating. Okay. Then you carry him to the mall. The mark refused to take him. What, 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 what really happened there? It's not me saying this, eh? You can't carry no dead nobody to no mark. This don't have nothing to do with money. Yes, you have to pay to keep the body and ice. But, but no civilized structure run like that. You can't carry back home no dead body. That is, that's the truth. That's for sure. That's for sure. That is for sure. Whatever you think, you may say some priest, where I tried to tell me, I ain't trying to tell nobody nothing, you know. I'm not in no spooky nothing. I'm in reality. So I, I'm not going to even bring in nothing else to mix up the conversation so you could say, I say, all I'm saying is the fact that they took the body, as it's called, to the doctor and then to the mob. That's history, history. And not right away too, like the day after or whatever. History, this is history. Eh? And then they were allowed to carry it back to Bobo Hill. And it still spent a little time and then it go down. And then there's a lot of stories behind that too, but I ain't bringing in no story. I'm trying to keep it very close to what we know cannot be denied. All right. That's interesting. And one should meditate on that, even as bubble. Meditate. What kind of thing is that? Never in history you hear nothing like that. 
Never. And this is not 1920, nothing. This is 1994. They're checking my little chinny chin chin was coming already. So that ain't long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Is something good in Jamaica? Eh, eh. Chat about man, blouse and skirt. That's how we do it in the yard. Eh. Wow. I don't think so. I don't think so. So that now would would you can't be too quick to dismiss when the doctor said yeah he passed but he still the pulse still beat him i don't know it may be an after effect or a residue just beating off or whatever but that's what the doctor saying now the reason why i bring all of that into this because it's christ we're talking about and it's lalibella we're talking about the reason why i bring all of this into this is because of this it says here, his body is then prepared for burial in scene seven, but is found to be still warm. His immortal soul is then received by Saint Gabriel in scene eight. And before we go any further, and we, we, may, we may seal it here. For this, for this text, we have something else to read. Don't run, go anywhere. We're having a wonderful time. It's a celebration, man. Heart of celebration, man. But hear this, the man. Ganja seal. Hmm. He's showing you that King Lalibella, they are already preparing the man for burial. But his body was still warm. And as we said on that program that I'm still encouraging you to get, no worry, all I said here, we said more there and we still have, we have other things to say here that wasn't said there. But as we said there, you see, there's a science within the structure too. That is why the resurrection science of three days and three nights is so important. Because what? Because the three days is really the time frame for a specific frequency to leave the goodie. You don't just bam, dead and dead. Eh? No. Nah. It's just like when you cut off the head of a chicken. You see the chicken running around, flattering, flattering, flattering. Remember the head gone in, flattering. You cut off the head of a man, he dropped out. Bro. Maybe he might get a. That's it. Chicken run up and down for minutes before it stops. Just mystics, check, check, check it out. So the point I'm making that is that, that, that your, your goody, your physical has so much energy. Your little fingernail has so much electricity and power within it, you don't even know. You are a living dynamo, just moving around with power. That when the life force leaves you, you ever see them lock off a big dynamo? It don't just lock off, you know, you lock it off. Yeah. It's the same thing with the, the physical. So so there are some people that, is, that this, they're, they're full of so much energy that even when they go, their body is still resonating and, and, and frequencies are still coming off. That is why Elisha in the Bible. Elisha. It is said that a war was taking place and they threw a dead man in a hole where Elisha was buried. And the dead man just touched his bones. He just touched the bones of Elisha and he came back to life. Now I know that may be a little, a little bit down the valley for some, but the point really is, is that it is showing you that even in death, there was power in the man, bones. Because he was so powerful, he's one of them dynamos when they lock it off. It do go, 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 do go. Yeah, it take a time to even shut down. There's certain heavy duty equipment when you lock them off. You can't plug them out, and so you gotta wait. Hold on, you have to give that five minutes. 
so we're not trying to be spooky here. The doctor overstood what he was saying. Yeah, the man passed, but his pulse is still beating. You may deny it because you don't know nobody that powerful that when they die, they're still alive. Yeah, the marks that go home with that. <laughs> he might wake up. <laughs> yeah, it's not me. I don't make it up. I didn't make it up. And none of you can deny it. I didn't make it up. The black Christ in flesh. Here we say about Lali Bella now. Pardon the passion, eh? Here we say about Lali Bella. His body is then prepared for burial, but is found to be still warm so the science with the three days again now that was the point i was making they have certain cultures that they don't eat they don't eat the carcass of an animal after three days again the science thereof i'm not a doctor and i've not never proved it but I've heard in discussion amongst the doctors, like for example, if you if you were to take a little the 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 the, the, the finger, take off the finger of someone, and you could sew it back on, not just sew it back on now like a seamstress, but connect it. That obviously has got to be for you to connect back a finger. That alone is a big thing, and you could do that successfully now, not just sew it on, connect it back all the bones and veins and whatever else that needs to be connected, sinew of muscles, whatever, whatever needs to be welded back or however they do it. If you can do that within three days, according to the doctors, the part, the body part, the finger would move again. But if you wait after three days, even if you successfully rejoin it, however you do that kind of stuff, it would not work because the life force would have been gone within that time frame. Now that's very interesting. So, so a lot of things we consider spooky and war is natural. It's nature. But you see, we just don't know who is amongst us. So that is what it says of Lalibella. Now the Lalibella story goes on to say that he went up into heaven and Saint Gabriel on the wings of Saint Gabriel. And when, when, when he was seen, God showed him, in fact, let me show you this quickly. In fact, yeah, as I said, I'm encouraging you. Just email me, man, precisec27 at gmail.com, and I will send you a copy of the program we did on Tuesday evening directly dealing with um, Lalibella. Oh, this part is nice. When they said he was living in a cave and his wife, Maskel Kebra, came looking for wild cabbage. You don't know what that is. We have some wild cabbage here in the cup. I'm looking for something here. All right. But anyway, this shows you in this book, it shows you that God, look at here. God then showed him 10 rock hewn churches. What, how, what does that remind you of? 10 rock hewn churches. The previous program we did on Lali Bella, I think we brought it out Sunday or Monday when we were asking how many churches did Lali Bella build. If you did not see that, you should go and watch that one. 10 rock, rock hewn churches. And that is why some historians say it was 10. Some say 11, some say 12, some say 13, but we already showed you why that's all a part of the mystics. So really, um, this is a nice uh, bit of reading. He went on to, to, to he went to Jerusalem and, and the Christ met him and the Christ visited his brother because his brother wanted to take him out. His brother actually had him arrested, saying that he was trying to overthrow him. And uh, they had to, they wanted to flog Lalibella, but the angel Gabriel came and, and blocked the flogging with his wings. So Lalibella went off unharmed. And Christ appeared to his brother, Herbe, in a dream and showed him, Well, listen, man, you better leave Lalibella alone. And he repented and Lalibella was merciful and gave him a seat next to his throne, according to the same text we're reading here. But as I said, because we want to continue on a next level, I am inviting you one more time. Just email me 
and say, Priest, I'd like to get the shock of the hour you did on Lali Bella, and I will send it right through your inbox. You get it email fashion. All right. Right away, straight time, straight ahead, and you can listen it for yourself, especially if you're coming into the house on Sunday. So he goes on to, to, to say that Lali Bella um, did not even want his son to take over the throne because he was very interested in the dynastic period of the of the Solomonic, uh, the dynastic lineage of the Solomonic um, kingship. Because remember that the Lalibella lineage is that said to be of Levi. The Lalibella lineage is that which is said to be of, of Aaron. So he is of that priest lineage. And uh, he, it is from what the Ethiopians would refer to as the Zagwe dynastic period. Okay, now just be with your brother here. This is what it's all about here in the tiger's nest. It's about information for those who are serious about it. We're going to be taking this one here, just showing you what we have. Lalabella Spiritual Genealogy. And um, this is the website is MDPI. All right, and we're going straight here because of the time factor here, translating the Acts of Lalabella, that is the same text, the same um, Gadil, the Acts of Lalabella, blessed bees and visits to, to heaven. So let's just run through this here quickly. The history of Lalabella ushers in a major shift in power in Ethiopian history since the founding of the Aksumite dynasty. The center of political and spiritual life in the country had been Aksum, the town in northern Ethiopia where the Ark of the Covenant is placed. In the 900s CE, the center shifted south to Lasta Roha, a small Amharic book published by a Lalabella church scholar, Afe Memhiher Alibacho, provides genealogical information that helps us trace the transition. The last Aksumite king, Dil Neod, employed a famous general from Lasta Roja named Mera Telak, Telaka Mayonot. Mayonot, uh, uh, Hymanot, hi, pardon me. Tekla Hymanot, pardon me. Mera Tekla Hymanot. Okay. That should be Mira or Mera. Well, Mira, but it's Tekla Haimanot. In fact, coming to, to, to think of it, there's several Tekla Haimanots that I think, or Haimanot, that are very historically famous in um, Ethiopia. Who married his, well, well, this one is a different one, who married his daughter, Mesobe Wok. When uh, Dil Nehor died without a male successor, Tekla Haimanot became king and moved the seat to the empire um, to Lasta. Oh, he married Nohad's daughter, yeah, where he found the, the Zagwe dynasty. Now, oh, listen to this 11 kings who ruled Ethiopia, ruled Ethiopia for 333 years. I mean, that alone is very deep to me. 11 kings. Eh? Remember the 11 churches. So you have 11 kings that ruled Ethiopia for 333 years. Wow, that, that's very interesting there to me. All right, let's just run through here quickly as it talks about the birth of Lali Bella as Zanam or Jan, that is his father here. Sam, Seon is, Se, Seoms, see some say Zan, some say Jan, like Zanyor, Zanhoi and Janyor, second wife, second wife. Uh, Kere Wona knew her child would be the first in line to succeed their father. Yet she was visited by an angel who told her that she would be a, a chosen son. At birth, a large swarm of bees covered the child's body without harming him, okay, which his mother, which is Kere, um, um, Kere, pardon me, Kere Womna saw as a sign that he would become a saint and a king. 
she predicted. So basically that brings us again into the whole aspect of the, the, the bee, the bees that surrounded him. Goes on here to say now, the acts state that the life of Lalibela resembles the life of Jesus Christ. Like Christ, Lalibela was born on the 7th of January, the day of the Ethiopian Taweldo Christmas or Christmas. Says Christ, Jesus' birth was accompanied with the appearance of an angel as a star. And it still goes on to say Lalibela's birth with angels who appeared as bees because that is the science there, that the, the bees were seen as angels, you see. So, 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 so Lalibela's birth, it was not just bees that came, it was angels that came to visit him. Now, one of the key points here that we want to express this evening, we won't be forever here, is that Lalibela is seen in many ways as the Christ figure. I have read in certain writings where they clearly say that when you look upon the face of Lalibela, it is as if you have looked upon the face of Christ. And in a few moments, I will be presenting to you some of the, the, the words from the priests that man the churches of Lalibela on a daily level. And you can judge for yourself if, if Lalibela is not seen as a Christ figure. Now, just the story that you heard a moment ago of, of how he was taken out and three days and three nights, that's really what it was. And he went up into the heavens and he went up into the seven heavens. And that is very similar to that which was done by the prophet Enoch as well, which is considered by many theologians as the first Christ, the first son of God, the whole Enoch experience, who, who was not said to have died, but he went up 365 years of age. But the same thing now can be said of Elijah, who went up, you know, his story is not really given of what happened after that. But Isaiah as well in Ethiopia, you have the ascension of Isaiah. These are Christ figures, any which way you want to turn it. So Lalibela now, which obviously some aspect of his story must be allegorical, goes through that same pattern. Dead, body still warm. I would assume pulse still beating and has gone up for three days and three nights because he came back in the same body. Yeah, that is what the story says about Lalibela, eh? King Lalibela, not a Bible character, a historical character, the same one that built these 10 churches, or is it 11, or is it 12, or is it 13, with the help of the same angels that he went and meet when he went into heaven. You know, you go and you meet some people and come back and say, yeah, man, I see the whole team. I have the whole crew to do the job. They're coming next week. That is exactly what King Lalibela went through. So, so he's born on the same day as the Christ. You understand? Now, now even the Christ that we talk about 2,000 years ago, people sit and debate about that even up to today. Interestingly, King Lalibela, who seems to be extremely Christ-like, almost like a Christ figure, has the same earth day as the Christ. And I'm telling you, there's nowhere on the planet that has a, a greater celebration during this time of Christ mass, like the Lalabella churches, specifically the Rock Church of St. George. That is where the party is. So the bees within their own self have their own science that they express. Because the bees represents many different things. The bees represents the virgin birth. Do you know that the bees at that level of insects, some people don't even refer to them as, as insects because of the, the level that they carry. Do you know that the bees themselves do give virgin births? And this can be seen, those of you who are beekeepers, you, you understand that the, 
the, the queen bee comes out and makes her flight. Yes, yeah, she does. She does mate with 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 the drone. It is uh, natural, but she has this immaculate conception because an immaculate conception and a virgin birth is not necessarily the same thing. I would assume a virgin birth. Wow, that that sounds like an immaculate conception. But an immaculate conception is a holy conception. It doesn't specify it's a conception without the sperm of a man. It's a holy conception. So basically, what the queen bee does now, it is her. She she lays the eggs and put them specifically in in the cells. You know the science. And she would take the sperm from the drone bee and she would drop it on certain eggs and the and the eggs that get the sperm would become worker bees and those that do not get it would become drone bees so technically or is it the other way around but whichever way it is technically what you have is one set of bees literally born without any assistance of sperm that's reality so, so in a sense, that is not only a immaculate conception, that could also pass as a virgin birth. And you see the highest science as it relates to the bees, eh? it's obvious you could see within the geometric structure of the honeycomb, you could see the, the whole hexagon. We know the science thereof again, and the honey itself is considered to be like, like the nectar of the gods. The honey itself, is said to be the food of angels because I'm sure you comprehend that honey uh, cannot spoil. You know, if you mix pure, clean, perfect water with honey, it will spoil. <laughs> but honey by itself throughout the ages will never spoil. So, so there's obviously some level of science that, it, that, that, that goes with the bees. In fact, you can see the sun rays around the bees you can see the sun cycle around the bees themselves and this is why we equate the bee with even the Tutankhamun science of the sun because when you look at the mask of Tutankhamun you could specifically see the rays of the sun aligned here coming down specifically to a point a narrow point and at the back of his mask, many ones may not have even checked this out, but at the back of Tutankhamun's mask, you have what is known as a bee sting. Yes, the rays, the sun rays, the golden rays, which are the cycle, the, the rays you see on the bee, the bee is referred to as the lion of the sky. The bee is also referred to as the tiger of the sky for obvious reasons. It's mane plus its stripes, which again represents the science of the sun. The bees work with the sun. The bees build their honeycomb with the sun. The bees migrate with the full moon. That's the science of the bees. So it's not a joke animal. So, so when Tutankhamun now has the sting of the bees, which is very mystic because it is the female bee that sting, not the male bee. Tutankhamun is a man. It's not the male bee that sting. It's the female bee that sting. And that is very, very similar to even how his supposed father, Akhenaten, behaves. For Akhenaten, as many would say, carries a lot of feminine, fe feminine attributes because it's the balance. It's a spiritual expression. And this was even seen with the sandals of Tutankhamun with his wife. So, so all of this, that is why I'm showing you that it's by no mistake we're not sure exactly how much churches to give the Lala Belly because it was made for that science. And I will repeat, if you did not listen to that program where we went into Jacob and the plot of lands and the 11, 12, 13, and 14, I advise that you go back and listen to that program once again. So this is the science as it relates to the bees. And in a moment, I will be, as we look to seal this up, I'll be giving you the, the words that I promised you from the priest's own expression, why you have to contemplate if Lali Bella specifically, the 7th of January is the Christ. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
and I saw them groups of the angel sturdy work of the and dear so if you're not familiar with this one is entitled Work of Me. Was born Benjamin, Ronnie Benjamin, Midnight. Groups of the Angels. Listen good. And I saw them. Groups of the Angels. Making churches. Sturdy work of me. And dear for yeah, yeah, international collaborative genocidal study of these commandos across the sea. Ooh. Military weather. Uh, it's to the gun job them put fire for ease. As for who stay together, they mystify the beast. I all of them copy. I tipul island, island, for worthless such as this, as this them one believe. Well, skills of the youth keep on coming. Hey, skills of the youth keep on coming. Yeah. Come bring it to them to keep believing. Just stay a hand on. One time man come down for the done, for the done, for the done, for the done. Don't always them airplane feet. Thirty-six thousand. Yeah, give a thanks, man. man. And still must have on the wheels. Building biological play. Yeah, give thanks courtesy of Midnight and I must say give thanks blessed the man Ronnie Benjamin as well. Ronnie Benjamin of Midnight, Ronnie Benjamin, the maestro, master musician, you know. When we, I know, well, you always hear me bring it up. People say Midnight, they talk of Virgin Vaughn Benjamin. We don't know who the man Vaughn Benjamin is. Eh? But I mean, uh, most, most ones is music they love, eh? the music they love. Eh? And Brother Ronnie Benjamin is really the maestro, really, as it relates to the group Midnight. And of course, Brother Vaughn Benjamin as well, master musician as well, eh? the music family, as you would know. So today is Ronnie Benjamin's Brother Ronnie Benjamin's birthday, the 7th of January as well. So blessed my Lord in the Christ fashion. Vaughn Benjamin birthday is the 13th of August. You know what I mean? That's Marcus Garvey. When we rise the red, black, and green flag, that's the beginning of the Olmec calendar. So everything well set, everything in order, you know what I mean? Everything in perfection. Yeah. So just before we continue, just reminding you, um, International Homeschool brochure is available for those who would like the brochure for themselves. So you could uh, go through the information for yourself and get a good understanding of exactly what it is that we offer for the international homeschool program for the youths as i said here just run through our classes are sent out every monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and the classes are in video form and appear in your inbox daily payments are 50 dollars per month 300 us per year that's for the whole year so you actually save 200 if you do it on a yearly level 
there uh, you get more than 160 classes over a period of 10 months that's the year that's the annual 10 months 160 classes i don't know if you really understand what's going on here and remember our classes are sent out every day every monday tuesday and wednesday we make sure we send that um, to your inbox uh, that's for your children eh? and and we offer astronomy and african heritage and let me say the classes are between 15 to 25 minutes in length uh, some would go over and um, that is obviously to keep the attention span of the young ones we ain't overloading them and i'm telling you we bring uh, the information that we bring is of university standard that's without a doubt it is university standard level of information i am telling you that your children would be getting uh, and they're getting it in a way that they can accept it you know i mean we not like puppets we bring into them and all of that but still we bring it in a way that they could enjoy it and full joy it and it's myself and my honorable prince and princess in fact you've seen the presentations we have done in fact when you get the brochure there's there, there's a link on here that will carry you straight to a presentation that we have done not the homeschool class but the homeschool presentation our scholars that's our student we call them scholars eh? our scholars surprise even their parents with the material they ret ret retain i mean what they keep in mind and and that is from the 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 testimony of the parents themselves and ch children love their daily lessons and of course the of course the uh, the assignments we would give them to do we do not overload it with assignments at all at all at all and of course as i said you can get this full brochure it's up to you you just have to email us and we will definitely um, send you the brochure in quick order in quick time and there's also a short video we could also send you giving you some good information on how you can become a part of this international homeschool program astronomy and african history all right all right let's take it from here all right so basically you get the idea where we are just giving you an understanding of king lali bella um a lot of what we are putting out here on sunday remember it's sunday mind you one more time man i gotta remind you it's sunday the 10th of january it's this sunday the, le the, the lecture is titled Lali Bella Christ and Christmas. Today is the Christmas, celebrating the Christmas. And as I said, we will be having a two hour online lecture. The presentation, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice, yeah. Because that's why we do these programs here. So this is to prepare you. And trust me, you watch this here. You, you email me and get the free program that we did on the shock of the hour and I send that one program to you. Um, um, you go and make sure you watch the program if you have not watched it and watch it again that we did on how many uh, churches does King Lalibella have. You, you, you watch these programs and then you come into the lecture hall on Sunday and you'll be very happy that you i would even say spend that 20 dollars. i know a lot of people will be watching them on each other i think that's very sad eh? that's a very 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 sad state of affairs and remember we're going to be starting the program mind your business very soon and a lot of these things we're going to get into very very to me it's a sad state of affairs yeah how we value information and value knowledge and value a proper state of mind that sometimes we have to think about a little twenty dollars. As I said, even doing this program here, oh no, everyone that's listening is supposed to already send that twenty dollar and, and get the ticket for for Sunday to make sure that the place don't pack up and they can't get in because you value information, you value knowledge. It's no, it no joke thing you're getting here. That's one thing we pride ourselves with. You know that. That we're not just repeating something in a book or reading something that has been written or saying what well, doctor this and doctor that say nah and i try to say oh well you've never been here and because you've never been in the pyramid so i've never been in this in this in space but earth is in space i've never been to sirius i've never been to the orion but we understand the science of the orion so don't tell me i've never been here and never been there 
as if you've been every single place that you speak about. You know what I mean? Stop going on so much. There is dumb arguments. You understand? So I consider the, the knowledge you get from the tiger's nest is not just knowledge. It's not just knowledge. In fact, maybe some, you could find more knowledge in certain places, but it's not just knowledge. It's whatever little knowledge we have here, we use that and bring out to me a, 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 a high level of understanding. That's how, how I look at it. We bring out a different frequency of comprehension with the knowledge we have. So it's not just knowledge you get here. It's a level of comprehension and, and seeing the mistakes within almost everything we discuss. Yeah, man, that's valuable. So if you serious, and I'm speaking it, I'm going to say it again, especially to the young ones that be, you know, let's be straight there. I honestly know that a lot of ones you know, follow the works that honorable criticize them. And many of you reach out to me, you know, you know. And and um, and and listen, many of you support to it. This ain't not about me and no support, you know. I'm not, that's not why I'm, I'm talking about you. You are talking, not me. I don't need a thing from nobody. It's you I talking about. Checking for your own self, not me. Not me. Yeah. You're supposed to jump at the opportunity to be a part of any lecture you see precise that giving here on the international community. Straight up. Not just waiting for a YouTube video to pop up. That's cheap. Straight up. And as I said the last time, some coward going to say, oh, everybody can't afford that. We ain't talking about who can afford it. We're talking about who can afford it. That plenty can afford it. But we're stingy. We believe in God we trust. But we don't believe in the real God to trust. Yeah. 20 year old Dutty, where his name is, George Washington, for the levels of information that you're going to get. Yeah, man. I have to tell you that. If I don't tell you that, it's like, it's like eating good food without cleaning out the structure first. A lot of people, they eat junk all their life and now it's time to eat good. You can't just put good food on all that gunk. You got to clean the gunk out and start fresh. So if I just keep coming, talking, 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 and putting good food in a whole clogged up stomach and intestine, it's not going to be as valuable as it should be. So you gotta clean out the rubbish. And it's clean, we clean out the rubbish, we cleaning out the rubbish mentality. Yeah, if you really believe that the information that you hear this brother here speak is valuable, and all you do is wait for your notification to say, bing, a new video there. That's cheap. I telling you straight. Especially, especially if you know you can't afford it. Let's put it that way, because some of you. Like if you're, you're in the attic of the, 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 the master's house, Rasta. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. It's invest. We invest in ourselves and all the people you watch and listen to, you know, man. That you say, yeah, this man reach here, this man reach there, and midnight can sing, and this man is enough investment. We don't get what we invest into this. And yet still we ain't begging nobody nothing. We're doing it for you. That's what moves us because we love you and just like how i would speak to my own children i would speak to you because i know some of you obviously not all of you for sure enough cooks and spies be listening regular to but i know a lot of you i would consider my children at least as a teacher and a professor you know that even if i never see you never spoke to you even if you never reach out to me because some of you respect me you know that no lie you respect me highly you do. So don't take me as no joke. I'm just waiting for that, 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 that. We have radio programs every night. Yeah, man, step up to the game as you're playing around. Shock of the hour is available. Some of you have children. And your children could benefit tremendously. All you have to do is drop an old little old rusty $300. And for a whole year, 
your children get invaluable information almost every day that will bust their brains and they will be happy to get it. Yeah, if we can step up, hey, listen, you think I'm saying anything now, wait till we start the program, mind your business. And since I'm on that, let me say one more time, please, anybody out there that have a business and you should have a business, no matter what it is, even if you work for somebody, you still have a business. You are the business. Your service, you know, work your work for the person. You are contracted by them. If you want to feel like them is your boss, that's up to you. But if you look at it as if they're contracting you to do the work, that's a different thing because you, your skill is valuable. Even if it's mixing concrete, your skill is valuable. Nobody can lift stone like you. Your skill is valuable, whatever it is you do. Let me just show you something quickly. Bear with me, man. Come, man. It's joy, man. What do you? Where are you going? It's Christmas. <laughs> Christ, man. Bad, yeah. yeah. Here in um, Antigua, there's a there's a there's a weather. I can't remember the man name. I think he's Lawn Josiah. There's a weather man uh, on the news at uh, the seven o'clock news. They have at least six or seven different meteorologists that come in and read the weather. So there's this specific one. He always used the word weather, like weather and whether or not. And he interchanges them every night he does it. And he comes with a new phrase. He'd come with something like, you know, whether or not you got to weather your weather, whether you want to or not, because your weather is weather. And he just does it and people laugh and everybody likes it. To the point that even the news anchors would try it before he comes on and say, well, you know, um, Lord Josiah, I think it's Lord Josiah. He's coming on, he's going to weather your weather whether or not you like it or not. And, but then he would come and counteract them with a harder one, because that's what he does. So what he has done, whether he knows it or not, you know, whether, <laughs> whether he knows it or not, he stands out. No, that's not his business, you know, it's his job. But he stands out from the rest where the people there that just come and say, good night, it will be fair to partly cloudy. Okay, he stands out, he pushes himself. Now, I mean, a few others have a good, nice presentation too, and some of them just... But I'm just saying now, let's just suppose he comes one night and say, well, I have a surprise for you fellas tonight. I have written a short book with 72 phrases on weathering your weather. It's only $5. You don't think people will buy it? You see? So he has used his job. You ain't got to leave your job. Eh? Not until you set yourself. So he has used his job. Or oh, he can't do that because he already have a head start from what I see. I watching him and say, yeah, this man can take this weather, 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 your weather, whether or not your weather to a next level if he wants to. You know, so these little different things. So even if you have a business or not, if you don't own a business, if you're not the entrepreneur, which is a French businessman, if you're not one of them things there, sit down and think, what do I really do? And then make up something, just the opportunity we're giving you. You're supposed to can make up a business. Say, hey, listen, Chris Isaac said, if you have a business, you can come in the tiger's nest and advertise it for free. Hey, let's make up something. Let's, say, let's go on the beach and get some shells and paint them green and sell them. We can go and preach Isaac for free and advertise it. So we are going to start that program again. Mind your business. I know somebody saying, man, we're talking. Let's get back to Lalabella. As I was saying, mind your business is the program that we will be doing <laughs> very soon. And, you know, it's a very serious program. No matter we giggling and laughing with you, you know, we ain't come here to play with nobody eh? And by now, you should pick that up. This ain't no joke. This is not the Bozo Show. Well, it is the Bozo Show because the Bozo people, you see you see how they have us talking? The Bozo people are the African people that could see the stars like the sea, like, uh, like the Dogans. So in a sense, it is the Bozo Show, in a sense. You know. But it's not a clown show. That's really what I should have said. Anyway, let me get back to this. No, no, no. You know, don't say what you say. You can't get back to it. What you say? Yeah. So, if you have a business, especially if you have an ad, it could be a, a, a video ad, it could be a poster, 
You could have a radio show yourself and you want to advertise a radio show. You could have a YouTube channel and you want to advertise a YouTube channel. Whatever you got, you fix tires, anything. Just contact your brother and say, my Lord, you don't even have to call me that if you don't want. Say, hey, well, now say, hey, guy, no, no, no disrespect me. But say something that sounds sensible and say that you would like to, to be a part of the Mind Your Business program. You would like to advertise on the Mind Your Business program. This would be on Mind Your Business alone. Once a strong, we produce that program. You know, so send in your business, man. Send your flyers, send your logo, send, write a script if you don't have an ad. Just write a script. We'll read the script. You know, we'll bring you on live. That's not a must. It wouldn't be the first time neither. Eventually, you know, we'll bring you on and have a discussion. You may have some good business tips too, as a business person for our audience. That's what we are doing. We're trying to make sure everyone can eat a food. No matter, no matter who you be, contact me, man. Don't be afraid. I don't care if you're hustling water from your bicycle in Grenada. Call me. Well, not call me. Email me. <laughs> yeah, email me, man. And let's do it. Mind your business. I want it to be a big program, man. I want it to be a serious program. Let's help one another, you know what I mean, strengthen ourselves, help one get out of poverty, who done out of poverty, get stronger, who stronger, get stronger than that and, and grow and build until we reach to our empire level as a people. But individually, we need to go individually. Yeah, we need to come together, that good, but come together and nobody have nothing is a waste of time. So you have businesses, you have ideas. You're selling flowers, you're baking cakes, you're, you're, you're making CMOS drink, you're doing all kind of thing. Contact your brother. And we'll put it out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So again, um, the brochure, we send you the brochure for the homeschooling if you desire. All right, let's go straight to this. <laughs> I blessed this place, and from now onwards let it be a holy place, as Mount Tabor, or as Golgotha, the place of my crucifixion. Or now, you see, I find that interesting. Now, they're reading from Lalabella's works. Remember, we went to the text and everything. And Lalabella describes himself interestingly here. So he's saying now, from here on, after the building of Lalabella, the city, he's saying from here on, the city here is a holy place, just like... Mount Tabor or Golgotha, the place of my crucifixion. Now you see, look at the, 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 the terms that is being used here. Why is he referring to it as the place of his crucifixion? I blessed this place, and from now onwards let it be a holy place, as Mount Tabor, or as Golgotha, the place of my crucifixion, or as Jerusalem. If man undertakes pilgrimage to it, it is equal as if he went to my tomb in Jerusalem. If you undertake pilgrimage to Lalabella, it's as equal as if you went to my tomb in Jerusalem. Who, who talking here? Christ or Lalabella? I'm just trying to figure this out. Because he, the talker, saying, if you go to Lalabella, is as equal as if you go to my tomb in Jerusalem. Also, oh, is the Christ talking? Well, it sounds so, but it's Lalibella's words. It's coming from Lalibella's text. It's supposed to be the words of Lalibella being repeated. Interesting, you know, man, because you cannot deny. First of all, the miracle of the rock churches, unlike any other miracle in Christendom. And I always say it is a shame how Christendom pretend as if they don't see Lalabella churches, a religion that pride themselves so much on miracles. 
have nothing to say about Lalibella churches. Lalibella goes far as to put the whitest, not Lalibella, but the people them that deal with Lalibella, the city now, or whoever, put the whitest pictures of the Jesus in there. I don't know if it's for recognition, because some of them say we put it there when the tourists come. So it seems like they want to be accepted. I'm not worrying with you. God. And that's the biggest miracle, I would say, in Christian now, in that we see. And in in in, in recently modern times, basically. Yeah. So King Lalibella is speaking like he is the Christ. Interestingly, he was born on the same day as the Christ, the seventh day of January. Hmm. Went through the sequence of the Christ vibes. They, the Karis, if we take Christ out of religion and put it in its ancient form, like the Karis or the Amsu, or oh, then we go on to a next level now. Because Heru is a Karis and Asar is a Karis. You know what I mean? And Pata is a caris. And Konsu is a caris. You know what I mean? Because you see them in the mummified form. And Sokar is a caris. Yeah, the Christ, the Amsu, the resurrected one. So, so if you take the whole Lalabella thing, maybe out of Christianity, the Christian realms and bring it into the African understanding of the science. You see where we are here. Lalabella is a Christ figure. Lalabella could pass for a feathered snake. And I think the dates, the story, the time frame is perfectly aligned. And if you doubt all of that, well, you can't deny his works. You hear how Christ does say, well, listen, man, if you don't believe what I say, judge me according to my works and nobody can ask what are the works of king lalibella and if somebody receives my flesh and blood in those churches he will be redeemed of all his sins you hear that king lalibella say you ain't got to go to Jerusalem. Just come and check me by Mary and um, um, Mahadi Alem and Gabriel Maskell and them churches there. If you receive my flesh and blood in these churches, all of your sins would have been forgiven. But Lala Bella had enough powers, man. <laughs> So, 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 I wonder if these people in Ethiopia know that, that go to his church and praise the Lord, if they understand that somehow Lalabella is placing himself in the way of the Lord. Clearly, he's saying that when you come to my churches, it is like visiting my tomb in, in, in Jerusalem or visiting the place where I was crucified in um, Golgotha. That is what he said. And at the same time, if you, if you come and you visit my church and accept the sacraments, you'll be, all your sins will be washed away. That's what Lalibella is saying. That's a lot of power, Lalibella. Where you get that power say, from? Because you were born on the 7th of January. Is that it? Because angels visited you by, in the form of bees? Yeah, that's that, that midnight was heavy, though. Eh? Yeah, man, deep stuff. Eh? Is that it? Because you died and came back to life in three days like the Christ? Is that make, that's what makes you the Christ? Yeah, yeah. Is it because you went as far as the seventh heaven and all the way up and saw the ten churches that God built in the heavens and got the, the mandate to come back as his ambassador and do that. Is this why you can speak like that? One thing, Lalibella, you seem to have a lot of accolades. And if many of us would get away from dogma and hardcore religion, 
and see things in its spiritual, mystical, and in, in its African sense. We can see, just like a Tutankhamun, just like a Lord Parker, because study the Mormons, huh? the Mormons, the Latter-day Saints, the Latter-day Saints, they're late for you, but it's all right. Study the Mormons. They say that Jesus Christ appeared can't remember the date, but I think it was around 680 or something. If I'm wrong, I stand corrected. But appeared to the Indians in Mesoamerica, Central America, somewhere down the line there. And they, they show you the artwork with the real Jesus, eh? Serapis himself, meeting the Mayans and these people. That's the latter they say it. Remember, Lord Pakal is a feathered snake the king of the Mayans. And that's around the same time that the Latter-day Saints said that Jesus Christ would have visited the same people. Yeah, man. So this ain't no spooky visited, come out the clouds. As, as we said on the same program that I'm inviting you. No, 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 that's the next program. But I'm still inviting you to get the shock of the Our Lala Bella program. Just email us and we send that to you. Eh? But as we said on another program, Many times when it speaks about reincarnation, as the program previous night on the shock of the hour, reincarnation, when it speaks of resurrection, pardon me, it's speaking of reincarnation. That's why Christ appeared unto his disciples in another form after being resurrected. Hey, listen, if you believe a man dead and come back to life, that's good. That's up to you. You can follow what you believe. But that doesn't take away from the fact that in the allegory and those who have put the work in, scientists throughout the ages, professors that have clear understanding of astrophysics and astrotheology and futuristic science have already mapped the heavens and have showed you what will take place, what will happen according to the movements of the stars. That is some serious stuff. So, so they have already showed you who will come and when they will come. It's just reality, you know. So Lord Pakal is a Christ figure because he's a feathered snake. We work it out. This is not belief. Do you believe? You must believe. No, we work it out scientifically. Tutankhamun is a feathered snake. He is a Christ figure. Lali Bella, don't rag it away from him. You can't deny it. The biggest Christmas celebration is held at his gates. Lali Bella had the biggest party for the Christmas. Malai, exactly. So uh, Lali Bella is a Christ figure as well, whether we like it or not. Yeah, man. Accept my flesh and my blood and all your sins will be forgiven. Them is some big talk. <laughs> Holy Manuel eyes, Lassie eyes, Rastafari. So give thanks. You know, it is celebration moment. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, as I said, just make the payments via the cash app. It's the easiest way at the moment. If not, just contact us via the email and we will definitely tell you how to make that transaction hey listen man i can show you how to to be a little more thrifty if you want if you subscribe for the full shock of the hour even if it's just for a month you see that's the thing when you subscribe for the shock of the hour eh? nobody subscribe for the shock of the hour for a month eh? and then come back and say well brother i'll i'll, I'll ease it from here no it's almost something you get hooked on the shock of the hour a person would have to be in some heavy financial situation where they come and say, my Lord, this is what's going on with me. Trust me. Nobody stop listening to the shock of the hour. It ain't something you just put down and, okay, I get enough. Impossible. I've never seen that happen. Trust me. Yeah, so 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 that's what it is. So, so even if you subscribe to the shock of the hour for a month, yeah, you definitely will be getting all the lectures that we do within that month for free. 
Do you know when you subscribe for the Shock of the Hour, you get the, the e-books, the three e-books that we have as the bundle. You also get that. See, I'm telling you all the little secrets, like you're not picking it up. You have to listen to it. So you can spend a $50. You can still come to this lecture. You get a whole month of the Shock of the Hour and you still get the three books. Yo. And more things there too, now, but you know, think, you know. $50. Or you can spend your $20 and buy the ticket for the lecture. And we might still give you a gift on the side just because you have patronized us. It's all about love, eh? Yeah, and as we say, we're opening the doors. I look it. Listen, don't hurt my heart now, man. I ain't not going to start. If I don't see a flood of people bringing in their business, I going to say, well, you're all serious, man. No, man, you can't be serious, man. You sit and you watch the priest all the time. You know you're selling this. You know you're selling that. What you feel like and do? Steal the business? What are you up to? Yo, just cool out, man. Just send your business in, man. Give me the work to do. Oh, just send it. It's hard. Send it. Email it. It's hard. I will, I will push it on that program. It's supposed to be our program. If The more we get, we, we, we double up the program and get all the businesses as possible out there. Of course, you know, we ain't promoting nothing we're not big up it, but still, and I don't expect you to bring no funny thing to me. But we there, man. You, 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 you make jewelry, you do whatever. Let us push it. Yeah, heart of celebration in the house of King David. Rastafari, live forevermore. Yes, honorable family, we give thanks. Thanks in the moment, give thanks for your presence, give thanks for the joy and give thanks for the Christ mass, you know, as they say, oh, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, you know, a ransom, captain, Israel, you know? low, in the morning, lonely, exile here, yeah. son of God, appear. so give thanks to all those who would have part and taken with us this day. Again, heart of celebration. All members of the Congress. Thanks. Do you know when is the Earth Day of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards? You don't? Many people don't too. And some argue that's the 31st of May. Something recently that I've heard. Interesting. I've spoken of it before. But I always found the seventh of January to be a, a good candidate for that. King Manuel never celebrated the 31st of May. To celebrate the seventh of January as the Earth Day of Christ. So which Christ today's Earth Day is? Which Christ? Who? Jesus Christ? Come on, let's be serious. Who is the Christ that today is his birthday? Be clear about it. Be clear. Don't be thinking of no fanciful thing. Be clear whose birthday today is. Are you just following something? I ask this Christmas. If it's I ask this Christmas, it's I ask this Christmas. But today is Lalabella's birthday too. And to me, Lalabella is a Christ figure. Are you sure? You're not celebrating Lally Bella's birthday. Think good. Are you sure you're not celebrating King Emmanuel Charles Edwards? Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. 